And we're joined by our guest, uh, Marcin Grabowski, director of the Center for International Studies at Development at the Jagiellonian University. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Great to see you. Good to see you too. So before we start our discussion, let's uh, have a listen to a soundbite. Uh, our colleague Sasha Farbach actually got a chance to speak with Charles Michel, uh, the president of the European Council. So, and he answered the question as to why Schultz is on, on a trip to China. Let's take a listen. But diversification looks, looks very, very difficult. If we have Mr. Schultz with a plane full of top-level executives, the entire German business lobby on its way to China, it sends a very different signal. It doesn't sound like and look like diversification to me. If, if, uh, if you allow me, I, I would like to disagree why, with, with what you said. Why? Because, for instance, Germany, uh, with the other member states, they are strong and very, very determined uh, European partners to diversify our supply chain. Because is the interest of the EU, including uh, the interest of Germany. Uh, when Mr. Scholz is uh, very active uh, uh, in Africa and when he's uh, uh, paying uh, visits to uh, African uh, leaders, this is uh, uh, also to help all of us uh, to diversify our supply chain. The same in Latin America. Uh, I think that this is very important for the EU because we want to be uh, a global uh, power, a global uh, actor. It's very important to engage with the rest of the world and to find a balance between the promotion of our values, the fundamental principles and values, this is, this is fundamental for sure, and the defense of our interests. And we know that for this uh, twin transition, what we call the twin, the, the twin transition is the, the, the digital uh, revolution on the one hand and the climate change uh, on the other hand, we know that uh, we need to adapt our economic model, we need uh, more access to the raw critical materials, and for that we need to engage with the rest of the world. So Charles Michel is uh, talking about European interests, but I mean, uh, if we take a look at the data, it seems that uh, China is a top trading partner of Germany for the eighth uh, year in a row in 2023, with over 250 billion euros exchanged between the sides. So my question is, to what extent uh, is that uh, trip, you know, sort of uh, conducted for the EU and to what extent it is uh, Germany's own interest? So I would definitely not agree, not uh, concur with uh, Charles Michel. Um, if uh, if we look at the Chancellor Scholz trip, of course we have to refer to changes in German and European politics, um, exemplified by 2021 uh, EU Indo-Pacific strategy, um, definitely redefining the role of China. But at the same time. Uh, we should uh, we should have a look at the problems Germany has at this at this point, and uh, with German economy uh, facing serious stagnation, um, it seems that um, Chancellor Scholz's visit is first uh, due to domestic uh, reasons and uh, searching for a market to expand China's presence in, in China. This presence has been growing. And uh, if you look at the recent three years, uh, Chinese investment um, has um, been similar to previous five years. So uh, they've been constantly growing. Um, 2023 FDI, uh, for foreign direct investment, German foreign di direct investment in China, um, it was uh, more than 12, uh, 12 billion euro. And that's definitely a uh, still important market for China. So for what Scholz is trying to do, what Scholz is trying to achieve, also, also exemplified by um, top uh, CEOs, top business leaders accompanying him from Siemens, um, from uh, Mercedes-Benz, um, et, et cetera, is to get better conditions to German companies, it, it, it seems in order to balance um, this uh, uh, rising experts, uh, still rising experts from China, because we talk about um, China as top German partner, that's that's absolutely true, the top, I mean, uh, Germany being the, the most important European market for, for, for China. But at the same time, um, Germany is now importing more uh, than exporting from, from, from China. And that's um, that's getting a, a, a challenge for uh, for Germany. So I, I I would rather consider his trip as a trip to support German economy 
um, um, predominantly and to lesser extent to follow the EU policy or to implement the EU policy, EU global role, etc. Right, and let, let me ask you the, the aforementioned um, EU policy. And I have a very straightforward question. Are Chinese investments in Europe a threat to the European security? I'm not sure about that to European security in a narrow sense. Uh, but um, I would um, see it as um, definitely a challenge in a broader sense. And again, referring to the 2021 European Indo-Pacific strategy, uh, we see that China's perception has changed significantly, or actually the EU uh, Indo-Pacific strategy ex uh, exemplified what uh, happened in Germany in 2016 when uh, Chinese uh, uh, were trying to take over KUKA, uh, automatic uh, robots or auto automatized robot producer. Um, finally, it managed to do so in 2022, just to clarify the issue. But uh, the KUKA case, as we know it, uh, changed the perception of um, Chinese investment in uh, in, in Europe. So even though I don't perceive it as a as, uh, threat to hard security, definitely it's a challenge to economic security and economic priorities that, that are defined by the European Union. And moreover, it was also mentioned with the, the risking strategy part of, of um, China's strategy adapted last year by, by Germany. Um, that, that this this economic challenges, economic uh, um, problems may be faced by by China. China that is a top producer of and uh, provider of green technologies, um, basically pretty coherent with what Europe needs: solar panels, electric vehicles, etc but at the same time undermining position of European industries with Germany being the primary industrial power hub right. for the European Union. So in this terms, in the longer, uh, longer run, definitely that is a risk that is an economic risk to right. the right. European countries mm -hmm. um, right, that we could say uh, European Union. Right, because EU has uh, launched a probe into China's state support for its electric vehicles uh, production and so on. And also, I mean, China has been dumping, right, all, uh, I mean, uh, these um, on the European market, but not only on the European market. I mean, the US has similar problem, right? I mean, uh, when Janet Yellen went to uh, visit China, she was also talking about Chinese goods being cheaper and sort of hence more competitive. Um, so what is the, uh, what is the way out of this uh, problem? That's a definitely a difficult, difficult question. So um, there are two options. Um, of course, um, we could go into protectionism. I'm, I'm personally um, against it. Um, however, um, negotiations to uh, limit government subsidies are to those uh, branches that are perceived as innovative, as important also for uh, green transformation in China. We have to remember that for last 10 years, China has been also intensely focusing on green transformation or on changing its energy mix or on uh, taking care of the environment, etc. So um, those subsidies are supporting these key branches, key manufacturers. Um, that they should be they should be limited and negotiations should go this this way the solution of the last result would definitely be um imposing uh import duties that would be an equivalent to subsidies provided to those companies however it's not easy in in china to identify how are exactly those um, those those subsidies that are pretty often indirect supporting research development etc and um, they tend to be presented as coherent with WTO rules, um, which, as, as I said, makes it uh, makes it more 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 complicated. Of course, um, even though China is not a cheap uh, labor country any longer, 
um, the regulations uh, that exist there make production, the also implementation of new technology, building new factories much easier, much cheaper than especially um, in the case of European Union. The US is slightly different case, but still um, it's more more difficult to get um, similar products with uh, cheaper cheaper prices. Um, so far, um, the quality was important in terms of competition. However, Chinese quality quality of Chinese uh, cars, well, uh, like I mean, EV EV cars, electric vehicles, uh, but especially those technologies that are mastered uh, to produce like solar panels, um, is not necessarily um, lower than than what we can deliver in 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 Europe, in the latter category. Basically, so it like, is uh, a very complex uh, issue. Uh, of yes, no no doubt uh, about it. Uh, Marcin Grabowski, director of the Center for International Studies and uh, Development at the Jagiellonian University, was a uh, guest tonight. Thank, Thank you, you very sir, much for being with us. Thank you for your kind invitation and uh, good night. Mm -hmm.